Today, we're going to be talking about dry eye. Yes, I know you're tired of dry eye. It's in every journal. It's everywhere. Everyone's trying to find out what do we do with the dry eye that patients have. Estimated about 30% of all our patients now are thought to have dry eye. Well, there's a lot of devices out, a lot of interest in dry eye. Now the doctors that didn't even like it are trying to get involved in it. Today, we have two individuals from New Sight Medical who are going to tell us their approach and their journey, how to get the rest of the patients interested, at least in doing some home therapy for helping their own dry eye situation. Welcome to Entrepreneur, the podcast for Wizards of Eyes. I'm Dr. Raymond Brill with my co-host, Harry Brill, and we're here to bring you stories about Wizards of Eyes. Yes, what is a wizard, Dr. Brill? Well, these are folks that you may have heard about, may not have heard about. These are people who are actually very successful in doing what they do in all aspects of eye care. We're not talking to self-proclaimed industry geniuses, experts, masters, or gurus, because we're talking to wizards of eyes that make it happen each and every day. They are out there working every day, in the labs, on the road, in the practices, in surgery suites, making lenses, making frames. Yes, we want to hear these back-of-the-house stories about innovation, entrepreneurship, and make you feel excited to do what you do. We want you to be energized about the whole eye care field. And this is not your big optical program. This is done out of the passion of our hearts. Please go ahead and subscribe to Entrepreneur, the podcast for Wizards of Eyes on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, or your favorite app. Also, visit Entrepreneur. Dot com where you'll find our latest blogs and special video content. That's www.eyetreprenur.com. Gentlemen, welcome to Entrepreneur. And can I have you each introduce yourself, starting with David? Yes, I am David Fajeri. I'm Vice President of uh, Business Development at Newsite Medical. And I'm uh, Kevin Jones, Vice President of Business Development for Newsite Medical as well, uh, handling the, uh, the West Coast and Dave's in the central part of the state. Well, very good. Could, perhaps you could start by your journey of how you got involved with Newsite Medical. Dave, you want to hit it? And a little bit about yeah. your background, too, so you're shaking, we know. You're shaking. Yeah, so uh, my background uh, has been uh, primarily with uh, diagnostics in the beginning with Carl Zeiss Meditech. Um, I branched off to a couple other companies where I was in um, product uh, development and um, taking uh, uh, products to market. Uh, and that's how I kind of crossed paths with New Site Medical. They needed a, a, someone in the, the central region with expertise in bringing products to market. Um, I had done some research in dry eye, uh, approaching this position. Um, and it was kind of a natural fit when I, uh, when I came to new site medical. Yeah, I, um, started in the ophthalmology space with, uh, I started, well, I started a distribution company back in 2000. And, uh, one of our products that we distributed for was Carl's Zeiss surgical. So I handled their distribution for the West coast, um, for their, uh, their surgical microscope. So developed a number of relationships in the ophthalmology uh, space. And uh, the current CEO of New Site Medical is somebody I met during my tenure at Zeiss, which was about 15 years. So anyway, um, he reached out and, and uh, it was a good time for me to explore new opportunities. And uh, I, I'm finding that the dry eye space is uh, it's growing and I think it's a great place to be. Uh, lots of new interesting innovation and technology and i think we also have an opportunity to to help patients with a problem that has been uh, i think probably underdiagnosed and uh, i think we're in a, a good place to help them as well as uh, develop a, a pretty neat business model and a great company yeah well thanks for the intro gentlemen um so you guys have a very interesting business model like you said you're both in the you know home care space where you're trying to train patients to take care of their dry eyes on a daily basis 
and you're also giving um, optometrists and ophthalmologists a tool, you know, to teach patients. So tell us about what New Lids is. So I can take this, Kevin, if you'd like. New Lids is an at-home, doctor-directed, mechanical approach to maintain not only lid hygiene on a daily basis for the patients, but also to clean and debride the bacteria uh, and or biofilm off of the lids, also cleaning the lash margins as well. I have one here, cleaning the lash margins as well. And then we're also taking some approaches to also go downstream to work with the glands on the tarsal plate as well. But it's really about three things, lid hygiene, education, and compliance. Yeah, I, I'd agree with Dave. You know, we're, we've come to a place in dry eye where compliance is a really important aspect. And, and Dr. Brill, you certainly see it with, I'm sure, your patients coming in. Um, and so we've developed a product that patients are getting great results from. Uh, and part of the reason they're getting really good results is they like using it. And, and they're getting results early on in the treatment. Um, and, and I think that's kind of our, our key. I think had lid scrubs work, had these different brooder masks worked, and had they been something that patients really enjoyed using, you know, we may not be having this conversation. But because there have been challenges in those areas with, with treatment of patients' own signs and symptoms. Um, we've come up, if, if we have a secret ingredient, it's really that people like using our device and, and they've gotten results early on. So uh, I think that's sort of where we, uh, where we have had a, uh, an advantage so far. Now, Fry, I understand you did a study and you had a study commission. Uh, tell us a little bit about your study. We sure. doctors, we want to know the study. Show me. Yeah. The <laughs> so Dave, you want to go? I, I've got, I've got, so we, we've done two studies. Uh, there was a, a new, new lids one and new lids two study. New lids one. Um, well, let me back up a little bit. So John Olkowski is a developer of the product and he's a fellowship trained corneal specialist. And so he wanted to make sure in the development of this product that he wasn't doing anything that could be construed as unsafe. So he had patients during the first study come into his office once a week for a month and he, used, and he had them use the device in his presence. Um, and the results from that were very good. And what, really what it was was a test to make sure he wasn't, that they were going down the right path as far as training or, or as far as making the product safe for patients to use at home. So based on the results there, he was encouraged and said, you know, we should do this trial. Uh, we'll do this with patients using it at home for 30 days, once a day. So it was a, a multi-center trial, three centers. Um, using you know, where patients use the device in conjunction with a with a, a gel um, and use it for 30 days you know every single day and the results came back uh, the clinical results were terrific and also the survey results were probably as important as anything else so clinical results were 65% uh, improvement in tear breakup time uh, OSDI scores uh, improved 51% from a, a 54 to a 27 um, tear break, I said, and, and then um, even with our meibomian glands yielding liquid secretions, an improvement of 81%. So those were great clinical results, but, and they really were driven by the fact that we surveyed all the patients in the, in the, in the trial, and 91% came back and said it was either easy or very easy to use, and 95% came back and said they were satisfied or very satisfied with their overall results. So the two numbers, 91 and 95%, really are what drove our clinical results because people liked using it and they continued to use it. Now, um, I have to ask how many people were in the study and was the study actually published anywhere? So it is not yet published, it's, uh, but the, it's not in the, in the journals. We, we were uh, at poster exhibits at the ASCRS in 16 and actually in 17 and 18. So it's been published that way. Um, number of patients, 37. So, and people will say, well, that's a small number. And the reason that we didn't continue the study was that every time on when we take the results from the test and we would plot them, and they came back on this, on our graph, the, 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 the results kept coming back and they kept, it was it almost looked like an ink blot because there were no really outliers. Results came back and they were really consistent. And because they were really consistent, we said, look, it's time to get the market. And, you know, being a startup, you can't spend the entire, uh, you, you have to kind of move things along. But I think we had outliers that we had issues. We would have continued the study. But because the results came back and were so consistent, they said, all right, you know, we can continue this. It's just going to be a bigger inkling. 
let me ask you another question. So how are the uh, subjects or the patients selected? Was it, uh, these are people with MGD or are these people with blepharitis uh, or demodex? Uh, blep and blepharitis, yeah, blepharitis, MGD. And they were selected based on, on, on the doctor's preference saying, hey, listen, these patients have, um, well, they were, they were kind of all comers. You know, that we didn't say, listen, stop doing what you're doing you know, only do this and do this. The only thing that was really consistent in the study was the all three sites, they used a hypochlor gel with, as part of the treatment, okay. but they wanted to make it as real a study as possible. So they brought, they said, look, you know, bring these patients in and have them start using new lids as, a, as an augment to what they're already doing. So, so I want to get right into the actual device. Um, David, could you describe in detail uh, what it is, and actually show it on video if you're tuning in to us uh, that way. Harry, New Lids is, here's New Lids. It's a mechanical lid scrubber is kind of what we do when we talk, what, what we say when we talk to our doctors, all right? And it is, uh, looks like an electric toothbrush, and we compare it lid hygiene to oral hygiene. The need to brush your teeth, some patients, some, some patients do it twice a day, once a day. The need for this for the patients is 15 seconds per lid, 15 seconds per lash line, once a day. So it's a minute a day. The tip itself is removable. We'll change the tip daily. The tip is magnetic. So when you turn the light on, it helps them see it. They then would draw the tip on. The light then turns green when you turn it on. I'm going to pull it back. So the tip does not spin, the tip oscillates. So it turns about an eighth of a turn each time, and it's a vibrating sensation. So a lot of times when we're talking to our patients at in-services, it, it, it essentially doctor scratches the itch, so it feels good to the patients. It also brings forth results, as Kevin had mentioned previously, in short order, is, as soon as five, the 14 days they start seeing the results and that could be as much as sleeping through the night being able to drive distances without having to stop and put drops in there's a multitude of testimonials that we've received as a result of the patients cleaning their lids on a daily basis great that all makes sense can you compare the new lids uh treatment device to that of the in-office treatment blefx yeah so one of the best explanations that, that we've utilized is if, if you were digging a trench in your backyard and you were going to lay down some, some copper piping for a gas line, the bluff axe would be the mechanical shovel, the backhoe to dig the trench. And ours would be the garden shovel. Ours is a much milder approach. It's not spinning like the bluff axe. And it's not going to do the same level of debridement. Again, the difference being is safety protocols. The bluff X is utilized in the hands of a doctor or a trained technician, or ours is utilized in the hands of the patients. Bluff X spins, ours does not spin, it oscillates. So much like the Sonicare toothbrush, we're breaking up the debris on the lids and removing the debris. One of the things that may be hard to see on the camera is there's little pockets and bristles. There's a well within the tip designed on purpose to draw out the bacteria and the biofilm and remove it from the lid on that daily basis, which is why the tip is not reusable. It is to be discarded after each use. You wouldn't want to put bacteria back and re-enter it to the near or around the eye. Same thing with treatment for Demodex as well. When we talk about it being doctor-directed at home, it is the doctor directs the patients on what to put on the tip. There always has to be a level of liquid interface. We certainly recommend a gel in the beginning. As Kevin mentioned in our study, there was a hydrochloric gel in, the, in, in, in our studies. That's today what we recommend for doctors. It's Demodex. It could be tea tree oil or some form of tea tree oil as well. Now, do you have to heat the that. lids up first? Is there some preparation the doctor or the assistant needs to do before doing the new lids procedure? Yes, so, yes. Go ahead, Dave. Basically, we, we train the staff on how to train the patients. Okay. So with it being doctor-directed, 
the doctor simply, simply in, 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 in some regards, prescribes the device to the patients, and then the trained staff members then will demonstrate for the patients or the doctor can. And basically, when you're doing the lid, we're doing the lid margins. So we're pulling the lid down and actually placing the oscillating tip on the lid margin to clean off the bacteria biofilm. We have doctors who are utilizing the term plaque because that's essentially what biofilm right. is. Right. Right. Patients can relate to plaque better than bacteria and biofilm on the lids. They understand plaque because of what's on their teeth. They can also then relate mechanical debridement at home to what a mechanical toothbrush would do. And we draw comparisons to doctors don't clean, dentists don't clean your teeth with lid scrubs or washcloths. They use scrapers. Because this biofilm is sticky and adheres to the lids, it, re it involves or it needs something a little bit more mechanical aggressive to clean those lid surfaces. How many seconds are you? using the new lid device on each eyelid? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's 15 seconds per lid and 15 seconds per lash line. Okay. For more advanced patients, as they get into utilizing the product, we have another advanced version of the treatment where we can flip the lid and there's training videos in this and they will actually do their upper lids as well. Okay, is there any risk of um, abrading the cornea? Number, number one concern is safety. It's been the number one concern of the product even before we launched the product. There is no concerns with hitting the cornea or abrading the cornea. We actually did a, a study where uh, Dr. John Olkowski took three corneas that were not fit for transplant and ran the device on them hard and fast. And without getting too graphic, it would be the equivalent of a patient taking a toothbrush and sticking it down their throat therefore making a toothbrush unsafe. So what they did with the corneas is he ran it hard and fast and, and really dragged the device on it. And at the end of all of that, there was a little bit of SPK, which would have cleared up in a day or two. And that was doing the equivalent of putting a toothbrush on your throat. So hey, Perry, in addition, um, so we were probably in the hands of about 12 or 1300 patients by now. Um, and so far, no reported incidents of uh, a corneal, uh, corneal issues, anything adverse that way. Um, so, and then even during our clinical study, the, the multi-centered study, we assumed, we, we estimated approximately 4,400 plus lid treatments. Um, and during that, during our clinical study, we had no adverse issues, uh, you know, no reported problems with any kind of corneal abrasion whatsoever. Okay, that's fabulous. Yeah. Um, tell me about where New Lids fits into a dry eye practice. Uh, let's start off with a practice that all they're doing is uh, maybe telling their patients to go to the drugstore and buy eye drops. How can this help that practice? So I think that it's a great place for a practice if they're just getting started with dry eye, it's a great place for them to start. Um, you mentioned a little earlier, there's not a big investment initially to get into uh, New Lids, into, into getting and carrying New Lids. So I think it also, so it allows uh, maybe a practice to sort of test the market with new lids uh, and not have to you know, commit to a large capital investment. Um, it's also one of those things that if patients, uh, like I said, our, our results have been so far have been very good. Patients like the product and I think it helps to maybe, it, it helps to, to sort of create a level of confidence within the practice to say, you know what, I think I can do dry eye. And new lids has helped me to kind of at least get my feet wet and I think from there, we can maybe, if you're going to take it to the next level, maybe you start talking about imaging and you start sort of taking those additional steps to be a more comprehensive dry eye treatment practice or clinic. So I think it's a good place to start. I think it's a relatively, it's cost effective for the patient and, and it's not a big investment from the practice side as well. How do the patients who are squeamish handle this? Because I've been doing Blefex and a lot of other advanced things. And sometimes you get somebody that is, yeah, uh, they're kicking and they <laughs> are. I mean, if you got them numbed and uh, you think that they're like eight years old and are yeah, two hundred fifty so, pound guy. So. so I could take this one, Kevin, if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, yeah. So, so because I've done so many in services, uh, Dr. Brill, we we've seen those patients, and 
typically those are men. Yeah, always. <laughs> uh, and so we, anecdotally, we have found that where we originally were treating both the bottom and the upper lids as we first brought the product to market, we have found anecdotally through uh, a number of different individuals and some doctors that we start those patients on what we call the indirect method. And that indirect method is simply lightly closing their eye and then running the new lids device along their lid margins. And I actually now have patients turning that device just a little bit like a 45 degree angle, which starts to get under that lid a little bit. Um, again, because it's oscillating, when it feels good with the right gel on the, on the product and it gets them used to one, the dexterity, gets them used to the feeling. And then we then help them to start with just resting it on the lid. And then eventually we get them to go in these, these motions from, from nasal to temporal to start clearing the bacteria and the biofilm off of the lids. So you're really emphasizing the lower lids first. We definitely are starting with the lower lids. We're starting with the indirect method. And we're also talking to the patients about it may take three to five days to get used to the product. Stay with it. We have a number of training videos that talk about that fact. Look, it's new, dexterity. You'll get used to it. Stay with it. It's worth it. Yeah. How about having some uh, spouses or other people that can help them at home? Yeah, that's a good idea, too. And I think caregivers. Yeah, I think, you know, anything they can do to, to make sure that they develop a habit. Um, and to Dave's point about it taking about three to five days, it, it, my, I always use the analogy, you didn't learn to ride a bike by trying it on Monday, then on Wednesday, and then on Friday, right? You, you, you did it consistently. And that's important to do this as well. Using it consistently, uh, I, I think, really is a big help. If you've got somebody that can help you to do it, um, I, I think that's, you know, I think that you can, you can have a little team approach. That certainly is very helpful. But. Yeah. Can you walk us through the business model of New Lids? Uh, you know, I think that's been a big deterrent for a lot of practices is, is you know, people may be coming in for office visits. And we all know dry eye patients are very needy. Yeah. And so at some point, we do have to make a little money to cover our costs and make a living. So tell us about the business model you provide. Dave, you want to take it or you want me to go? So the, the, the business model with New Lids is the doctors will uh, buy the um, device, uh, the starter packs up front, and depending on the number of starter packs that they purchase up front, uh, will then determine the pricing. Um, we uh, have seen market pricing fall within the doctors making around 100 to now $115 per device at the point of sale. So they're gonna sell it directly to the patient. And then there's a revenue model, a revenue share model on the tips themselves because it's a daily tip uh, usage. The tips cost the patients a dollar a day. And then depending on where the practice is in the business model and the dispensement of the product, they'll share um, in the uh, percentage of the revenue on the uh, daily tip use of up to 40%. So it's a, it's a pretty aggressive business model to be able to take your dry eye patients treat them at home, have them treat themselves at home, have it be a solution for them, and that will uh, allow you to free up the chair time within your clinic for some of the other, uh, other, other patients with regards to the medical model. Yeah, we're really how, trying to help. Yeah, I'm sorry. How are the patients, uh, how are you finding the patients continuing with this? Do they do it for a month or they... Do they just do it to like feel better and then maybe once a week? Or are they actually saying, okay, I'm going to do this every day, like brushing their teeth or flossing? The, the education, and, and that's again, when I talked about the circle for our product being compliance, at-home treatment, and then education, those are the areas where the, not only the patients, but the clinics that we're working with are teaching us and where we're enhancing our business model to the patients and to the practices. And it's all about education. So the further we educate the staff and sometimes even the doctors on how to address the disease with the patients, letting the patients know that it's not just a tear issue, that it's a lid issue is the beginning. It's the start of it. Yeah. Talk to me about the partnership of New Lids with the ECP. I think a lot of times in the dry eye space, uh, manufacturers compete directly with 
the doctor and it's just a bad relationship, but you guys seem to have a, a much better differentiated model. Yeah, I'll let Kevin take that. So yeah, we're committed to making sure that we are taking good care of our, you know, our, our, our partners. Um, and I think part of that is demonstrated by the revenue share with the tips. Um, and, and, I, and that's a pretty aggressive model there. And in addition to that, what we're doing, to Dave's point about education, um, you know, during the first 30 days, actually the first 45 days, we're in touch with a patient via email uh, six to seven times, uh, making sure that they're developing good habits. We're helping, and this is all kind of goes back to helping the practice in developing their new lids business by doing what we can do on our end to keep patients engaged in new lids um, and, and, and make sure that they're continuing to, to order tips to, uh, to develop habits using new lids. And I think when patients are effectively using new lids and they're getting good results, that's a great, it's a, it's, a, it's a very nice reflection on the practice. Um, and we're bringing, I think we're trying to bring value there and truly partnering with, uh, with, with your patients and, and, and making sure that they're happy using new lids and getting the results they want. Again, uh, a happy dry eye patient is, tends to be a very loyal dry eye patient. And if we can, in part, um, use our device to help them with their condition, and it was purchased by, you know, at your practice, I think they, they, they sense that, okay, you know, the, you know, this practice, Dr. Brill's practice has, has helped me to manage the signs and symptoms of my dry eye. And because of that, you know, I'm going to tell my friends, I'm certainly going to continue to go there for my glasses, for my, you know, my co-management of my, my, you know, LASIK or my cataract. So we're really trying to create a product that is, has a stickiness to it and, and helps your patients stick to you. Um, and, 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 you know, continue to you to be your patient and, you know, not just from, not just for their dry eye problems, but for all their issues. Right. And Kevin, if I can add one last thing to that is one of the things that we do have uh, available to all the clinics that are participating in the new lids model is uh, the doctor portal, um, which then gets paired with the patient portal. But within the doctor portal, we're able to track usage. We're able to track the reorder rate and the engagement of the patient. We're able to now start tracking. We talked originally with this question was, how does a new clinic who's just starting in dry, one Kevin touched on, it's a low investment to get into the into the product. But then it also allows the doctors to go one step further with identifying those patients who are gonna be engaged with treatment protocols as potentially a doctor wants to get further down the road with treating dry eye where he may have, start with an imaging device, and then maybe build into some in-office treatments, um, such as uh, what we would term as maybe more of like a heat and expression or a more detailed or a more aggressive mechanical uh, debridement. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, chime in here. So a lot of companies start out with a doctor-directed model, and the next thing you know, the product or the replacement uh, tips are on Amazon. And that's happened in nutraceuticals. It's happened in just about everything. So do you have some assurances or do you have some way for us to know that this will not go the way of uh, avoiding the doctor? Yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're proving that even even today um, with with the, you know, revenue share model. Um, we we're managing the tips for the clinic. So when the patients are reordering, they're ordering directly from New Site Medical. Um, we've uh, discussed enough with enough, we've discussed this process with enough clinics, but they didn't want to have to manage the, the tip, the tip aspects of it. Um, you know, how, how do, how do we, uh, you know, essentially put out guarantees? I don't know how, how I could state that today. I know that we know that this product needs to include the doctors. It needs right. to be put in the hands of the right patients. Um, we talked about some of the some of the patients you mentioned um, earlier. Um, there's patients who new lids will not work for aqueous deficiencies, things you know, maybe some more advanced Sjogrens, um, maybe patients with diseases like herpes, or patients who are maybe on chemotherapy, where this product should not be in their hands. And if it was just on the shelf for them to buy, um, that may taint the reputation of new lids. Yeah, we want to make sure you- it's directed. What do you tell doctors who are too scared to sell a product in their practice? You know, they feel like they're a salesperson and not really a doctor. Yeah. 
So we have a program which is the prescription model for those doctors who um, don't want to sell it in the clinic, don't want to even make the $2,300 or $2,400 investment to be able to have this as an offering. So we have a prescription model where we would um, provide them with almost like a coupon book or a prescription pad where they would then direct the patients to, to purchase it directly from New Lids. And then that doctor for prescribing it would then share in the revenues uh, based on the model, based, you know, future uh, tip revenues. Perry, so they're still engaged with treating the patients. Perry, I would say that, that, that you know, I obviously, you know, as, as a doctor, you've got a, a different relationship with a patient and, and you don't want to be a salesperson. I, I understand that. But I would say that if you're, my, my position with these, these practices is that you're offering something, right? You're either offering a lid scrub, you're offering, um, uh, you know, a brooder mask, you're offering to prescribe the stasis for them, you're offering a lipoflow. So we're just part of the offering. Uh, I, I think you, you put it out there and you say, listen, you've got this condition. Because of that, here are some offerings that, that you know, that, that have worked. Um, the successful practices, honestly, are making this a recommendation. They're being stronger than just saying, hey, this is, here's all the things that, that you can that you can use. And I think patients are coming, and Dr. Bill, you should, you certainly can talk to this, but patients are coming to you for, for help. So obviously you need to do what you think is best for them. Um, and, 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 but I think sometimes I, I've seen practices where they are, they are saying, well, we've got all these things. What do you think, patient? And that often doesn't work for them because patients come back and, and they probably are going to opt for the least expensive one, which is natural as a consumer. And sometimes those don't work. Sometimes, you know, the, the best value isn't always the cheapest product. Right. And, and so anyway, I think there's a, you know, there, we are part of an offering you know, in, in a continuum of, of dry eye products. So, yeah. Well, when we uh, do a dry eye workup, that's what yeah. we call it. And, and patients come from a long ways away, uh, different states. And so when they come in, we tell them we're going to make a diagnosis and, and the, the therapy uh, and the recommendations are going to be based on that diagnosis. And yep. hopefully it's all presented cogently, presented so that they understand this is how we solve the problem. Because you should ask the question, you told me what's wrong, now how do we solve it? Yeah. And, and there, are, there are some patients that say, okay, yes, let me do intense pulse light uh, because we show that their main issue is rosacea and or some patients that do lipoflow or ILUX. Yep. Uh, so we try to present it and... And at that point, we get feedback that this makes financial sense. They've already spent a lot of money. Some people are spending $500 a month for, uh, for restasis or Zydra or yeah. all the other therapies they're doing. Sometimes it makes a lot more sense. And let's just protect that investment. And, and so I think it's, you've seen one, you've seen one. And, uh, uh, but we don't, don't want to make some things look like, okay, let's just do the minimal because usually you have to do something. Yeah, uh, that really works, and then maintenance kind of protects that. Yeah, so, yeah. I've I've really noticed that in the dry eye space, we've been uh, at it real hard for the past five years. Um, once all these kind of new technologies came out, and patients every year, especially dry eye patients, they want to see something new every single year they come in to help with their disease. You know, if you have the same treatments every single year, they're gonna you know go seek out the next dry eye doctor who's more advanced. So I think. A strategy five years, five year strategy for any dry dock is you have to keep adopting new, okay. new, new. Yep. Like well, new lids, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There you go. No, I think that that's important. I, you know, the, the, um, the, the marketing we've done online to help generate interest about the product, um, our, our chief technology officer has done a lot of that with other industries. And he says it's amazing the, response that he has gotten from dry eye patients and and by his response he talks about it being conversion rates and these conversion rates are what a patient will what somebody online will provide as far as information and and so you know he put something out there about you know wanting to you know, he'll put a, a campaign together and patients for him a conversion is somebody giving them name number um you know email yes i want to learn more and he says conversion rates for us have been anywhere, depending on the on the area, 25 to 35 percent, where in other industries, it's it's a little bit better than direct mail, maybe in the three to five, three to six percent conversion rate. So to your point, Perry, it's people are dry eye patients are anxiously looking and, and, and actively looking for something new to help them to, to get a little relief. 
So it's, yeah. it's interesting. And I think there's a, it's just kind of, I think we're kind of at the tip of the iceberg with, uh, with dry eye management and dry eye technologies as well. So this yeah. is new, new lids. Uh, is there a new lids two or five or what's on the horizon? <laughs> or you do have a, a portfolio of products and so, yeah, you know, so I, it's just new. Think, they often say you're a product, not a company. So tell us about that aspect. And are All you right. going to be on Shark Tank? Are you going to be on Shark Tank? <laughs> not going to be on Shark Tank. <laughs> if, if we were to look behind the curtain, I think we're, we're trying to come out with different tips. Um, and, and these are all just sort of wild ideas, um, different tips um, that, that maybe address different, uh, you know, maybe MGD or a Demodex tip or something like that. These are all just ideas that they're kind of throwing out um, and, and sort of product extensions. Um, the, the idea behind the tip, well, when you see it, you know, they're just like your toothbrush, there's a, there's a, there's a small delay every 15 seconds. Um, we're looking at maybe, you know, being able to change that. We're looking at Bluetooth technology or an app as well, you know, basically that kind of those sort of advancements or next kind of next generation. So, yeah. Tell me about, tell me about the usage of new lids for young people versus old. I think we really need to focus in on the 2030. Yeah. Because uh, it's easier to prevent something than fix it. So I, I think that's really the, Dr. Bro, when you ask what, what's the future, in, in the next, say, two to five years for new lids. It's today, um, from an adoption rate, it's treating the patients who are telling you they have dry eye, right. the patients you're diagnosing, okay? Right. I see the future in this, much like we saw the, 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 the growth of the medical model and the growth in diagnostics when we started using them as preventative maintenance medicine as opposed to just identifying right, the, the, the root cause. So now we're we're now uh, we're seeing the Optos wide field camera imaging ten year olds, twelve year olds, five year olds, right, who have no signs or symptoms, but we're collecting databases. So I see this product in its growth, um, and in, in the uh, in the earlier treatment. So now in, in what we're going to start thinking about is because of an oscillating tip, and because we know that we're creating capillary perfusion, and we've seen anecdotally, not scientifically that some of the glands are getting better, the ones that have not died off, we can then start addressing patients with early signs and get them to start treating their lids and lashes earlier so that they don't get to the point where they do have true signs and symptoms and have it be a debilitating um, process, disease. Yeah, I think, you know, it's probably, that's sort of the, that's the, that's the future of dry eye is, is getting these patients in and, and on a program earlier, I, I think that's probably going to be more challenging. I'm certainly from a, a practice standpoint because if these patients aren't really feeling the signs of, of dry eye, but you're starting to see it clinically, you're starting to see it with imaging. I think that's really an important piece in helping those patients to, to understand their condition. Um, so I, 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 I look at my daughter, you know, paste it to her phone all the time. And, and, and I, I, you know, I always walk by, I said, blink, you got to blink. And, and, you know, um, she, and she looks at me like I'm crazy, but I said, you know, you're 17 and you've got, you know, you're probably gonna have the glands of a, of a 60 year old in, in a few years if you keep up your current habits. So I think there's a lot of education that needs right. to happen. And I think that, um, I, I do think that it's, uh, it's unfortunately going to be our next customers are going to be these younger patients. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about the uh, person, what we call non-obvious, uh, MGD or non-obvious dry eye. Yeah. How about the people who are, who are really suffering. I mean, these are people who have LASIK, they have yeah. eyelid tattooing, and yeah. and they can't, I mean, they are ones who suffer just going in the light. They can't spend much time on their screens. How are you gonna get them to do it when everything that they use seems to hurt them? Yeah, these I think- neuro, Neuropathic pain patients. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think again, that's, that goes back to it being doctor directed and, and it's the doctor, um, either utilizing the product on the patients in the office, uh, demoing it on the patients in the office, um, in servicing the patients in the office in the beginning. Um, I had a patient very similar to that who had been to, I think, 17 different doctors over the years. And uh, the doctor told me the story, and and for lack of the name, I'll I'll call her Louise. And he said, 
when I saw Louise come back after using new lids, that was the day Louise became a hugger. Oh, because right. I started treating her symptoms. I started treating her. Um, the, the, the testimonials and the feedback that we get, and because the doctors are utilizing this on those patients who they're starting with, just like we used to do when I would demonstrate the OCT, I would tell them we get through small pupils and then I would get a one millimeter pupil at the demo. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So we, we've seen doctors utilize new lids in the beginning on their more challenging patients. Yeah. And we always do it on our worst patients yes. first. Uh, and, and, or yes. somebody, a doctor will do it on themselves at, at end of one and say, it didn't work. I didn't like it. Nobody should have it, which I was trying to And we've seen that. And we've seen that. And, and again, it's a new company. We came out and because we were trying to get bandwidth and we were trying to get our name out to the market, we would do N of ones and it proved never to be successful. And I want to say almost statistically never, um, or the doctor's wife has dry eye and then it's being overanalyzed, right? Right. We have, as Kevin mentioned, nearly 1300 patients utilizing it and the, the feedback and the, the patients who are willing to do the testimonials is again, one of those numbers that is not normally seen. These patients That's want good. to talk about how much better they feel. Yeah. Hey, Bring Kevin. Yeah. yeah. Kevin, tell me about doctors who think, you know what, I'm going to kind of bypass the whole system. I'm just going to start charging for new lid treatments in office. You know, I, I, that's, uh, we have never, we, the product is never, was never designed as an in-office product. Um, it, it, it's just, that's not what we do. And, and I think you're setting up your patients for disappointment if you think this is going to be a substitute for a Blefex or a Lipoflow or a Mibaflow or an Ilux. We're, we're just, we were, we've always been designed to be the at-home maintenance device. So I, I think that, you know, Obviously, practices are going to do what they're going to do. Um, but when I have had that question to ask me, I said, look, we're not that, we're not that company. We're not that product. It's not going to be helpful for you in that way. Great. What do you do when a doctor says, my patients, no way, they cannot afford this? Uh, uh, you know, they're already prejudging. They're reaching into their patients' pockets. What yeah. do you tell that doctor? So if you look at it, if, and these are assumptions we'll make. So dry eye is chronic and it's progressive. It's not at this point, it's not going away. Um, and, and if you look at the cost of the device, um, we advertise on our website $319. So if you say a patient bought it at $319 and they bought a tip every day for three years, so they used you know, 365 tips a, you know, a year for three years, the amortized cost of that is $1.28 to the patient per day. So, you know, Dr. Bill, you talked about restasis patients, you know, paying exorbitant amounts for a device for something that is important. I'm not saying it's not important, but if 86% of your patients are evaporative dry eye patients, we're getting right to the to the heart of the issue of the cause. So for $1.28 a day, that's that's a reasonable that's a, it's a it's a reasonable cost for a patient to uh, to have to, uh, to to incur. So now they're gonna next thing they're gonna ask is. Does insurance cover it? <laughs> and then after that, why doesn't insurance cover it? So. Good questions all. I, 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 you know, um, I, I don't know why insurance isn't covering it. Probably because uh, if they don't have to, they, you know, why should they? But um, I, I think that, um, you know, that's just most dry eye products today are not covered by insurance. You know, and, and it's the same lip, for Lipoflow, Mibaflow, and, and all the products or all the office procedures you do. Unfortunately, it's still out of pocket. So. Don't have a great answer as to why the why insurance isn't covering it yet. Maybe you can expound on that a bit. Oh well, I just tell them insurance was looking to not cover things. And right. They're not there to cover more things every year. Right. So. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but yeah, at this point we are not. And Harry, if I could, if I could just add to Kevin's response to. The, the doctors who believe their or think their patients wouldn't be able to afford new lids or would never pay for new lids, therefore they feel they're not going to carry it. Um, dry eye is debilitating disease. And when you take a dry eye patient you, you, who's coming to you for the conditions and ask them, you know, how would you rate your, your dry eye, which I do at almost every in-service, it's usually an 8 or a 9 or sometimes a 10 out of 10. Um, 
And it's the belief if, it, if the disease is debilitating and they're coming to see the doctor about this disease, to at least have something like new lids as an offering and let the patient decide if they'll pay for it or not. Because we're finding that in areas where you would not expect patients to be able to afford it, patients with very high demographics in Medicare or Medicaid, um, these patients are buying it. There's some of our largest and uh, higher volume distributors. I mean, I have, we have Flint, Michigan here. Um, it's just one of the um, um, poorest uh, cities in the, in the country. And I have one of my strongest um, accounts there. Uh, just by merely offering it to his patients and having that be something he recommends for them. Based on what Kevin said, get some off for uh, maybe some drops. Maybe they can get away from having to use uh, the daily drops as they use them. We, they, we take away and then we add new lids. Right. Uh, it yeah, that's, it's interesting uh, when you say the, the more average demographic, those patients are more trusting of their doctors. Thank They're you. not expecting everything for free. Right. They buy a, a truck, they're buying a good F-150 truck. They yeah. buy their tools from not at CVS. They buy them from a tool company, and they're not expecting to get it at Costco or their insurance pay. So it's it's interesting. It's exactly opposite of the higher-end demographic who expects everything to be free and yeah. or get That's it online surprising. or at, at Costco. So yeah. it's very interesting. Some will and some won't. Uh, so you just have to move along if they don't accept that. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, perhaps we could try to wrap this up a little bit and maybe you can make some uh, final observations or statements and tell us how we can, our listeners can, our viewers can actually get a hold of you and learn more. So I, I would wrap it up by saying that um, practices that are embracing dry eye, I think are, uh, they're making really good decisions. Um, it's it's a, the number one reason a patient will, will come and see an eye care professional is because they've got their eyes hurt, they're itching, they're burning. And, and so if you can develop a program that, that helps those patients, you create a new patient, but you also create a really loyal patient and, and a, you know, a dry eye patient who is, if you, if you've solved the dry eye problem, a dry eye patient's problem, you've created a very loyal patient and a patient who will tell others about your, uh, your, your practice. So, uh, I think it's a great place to be. It can be challenging, but I think it's worth the, uh, worth the effort. I would say this, I'd say if the medical model has, has proven anything, it's that patients will respond to treatment. Um, for practices that are interested in treating dry eye, um, this is an awesome solution for them. Um, number one, number one, it works. I mean, we're seeing this work in our surveys at a 95% rate, the patients are happy. And through education, the patients are staying with it. We're seeing that in our reorder rates of the tips. So we have the statistics to back up now the results that we're seeing in the field with our users. It's all about treating the patients and the, the, the dry eye patients that aren't being treated in the clinics. You mentioned it, Perry. I mean, they want to see new stuff, but really they want to be treated. And yeah. if it's working, they're going to stay with you. If it's not, unfortunately, they do look to other avenues and other other options. Um, I mean, we're here to help. Is there actually a, a risk reversal uh, for the patient or for the or for your distributing doctor, where a patient says, "You know, I tried it, I hated it, I didn't like it, I don't want it, I can't afford it." You know, it's just whatever the excuse is. Is there something? Because we doctors, we like, okay, we want to be able to save face and be nice to the patient within sure. a certain time period. So. What does the business model allow for that? So that we, and from a, if I'm hearing correctly, if we're asking if a patient tried new lids and it simply didn't work for them, then we we then look to the practice on what their return policies are. Okay, as a company for our doctors, we offer a 60 day performance guarantee on the product. So we stand behind the product in knock on wood. We haven't had product return to date um, on the performance guarantee, but we have seen clinics take returns for those patients where it didn't work. And then what we did is work with the clinics to make them whole on that device, whether it was replacing the tips, 
uh, making sure that they, they could repackage it and then also be able to resell it as a refurbished unit, clean it up. I see. Um, but so we work again, it's a partnership. Okay. Do, and it's a partnership and we want everyone to win on this and succeed with it. Okay. Putting the patients primarily. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, speaking of partnership I, and as far as management goes of patients and attracting dry eye clientele to your practice, um, you know, it really can't be done overnight. It's a two to five year strategy and you have to put in the marketing effort. You have to buy the tools. You have to start generating content online, videos, testimonials, and uh, taking your time. It's all about patience within your practice. If you expect to churn through patients like you do eye exams, you know, you're in it for the wrong reason. So being patient uh, with dry eye patients is those number one as well. Yeah. well. Tell us how we can, how our viewers and listeners can further follow up on this and contact you guys. So it's www.newsitemedical.com. Yeah, Again, it's www.newsitemedical.com. We've got, um, we've got uh, testimonials on the site. We have videos on the site. And we have ways that you can get a hold of uh, myself, Kevin, and some of the other um, distributors uh, in your local area to, to help. Uh, we'll come in and do on-site um, demos, um, get, get you on the phone, and we'll walk you through the product. Also, new site is N-U-S-I-G-H-T Medical, not N-E-W. So N-U-S-I-G-H-T Medical.com. Cool. Well, um I appreciate you giving us insights into the New Lids medical device, Kevin and David. Thank you. And wish you guys a, a good day here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Bye bye. This brings us to the end of another episode of Entrepreneur, the podcast for Wizards of Eyes. Go ahead and click over to our website, entrepreneur.com, or head over to Facebook to join our special Facebook group, Entrepreneur. See you there.